ಸರ್ಕಾರಿಕ ಸರ್ಕಾರಿಕೆ um today is the first day um and so it hasn't been so much time yet um the um uh, president nasheed um is staying at his house now um because he was welcome to continue to stay in the presidential residence as long as he needed but he preferred uh, to go back to his house um i understand stay on this initially he continues to receive um normal um security uh, protection that he used to have as president 
and no effort has been made to dismantle it or to minimize it in any way. And I have personally made sure that the law enforcement agencies are assured that President Nasheed is protected um, according to the law. Um, we are trying to form uh, a new government, and I am in consultation with uh, all the major political parties. And um, I have had several meetings with them, including the president of uh, MDP. I'm optimistic that uh, by the end of today, I will have at least, first of all, an indication how many parties are ready to participate. Second, um, their um, uh, suggestions uh, for nomination. My plan is to um, continue um, consultations with political leaders and then come up uh, with the nominations that will first go to the parliament. And after the parliament approves, I will appoint them. It will take a few days for the process. But in the meantime, government continues. Uh, as you know, we have a very, um, um, we have a civil service in place. The independent civil service, and uh, every government uh, ministry is headed by a responsible civil servant. They will continue their work. Uh, some of the political appointees will be changed for, for obvious reasons, but um, um, it will take uh, a few days for the new government to be fully in place. Mr. Wahid, Steve Chow from Al Jazeera. Hi. Your former partner, Mr. Nasheed, has come out to say that this is, in fact, a coup d'etat. Now, you've said this is not so, but he says that he was forced by the military and the police and given no other option but to resign, and that you were part and parcel of this scheme. Your comments. Do I look like somebody who will bring about a coup d'etat? <laughs> I think this is an unfair statement. The president resigned, and according to the Constitution, as vice president, I am supposed to swear in. I was invited by the Speaker of the Parliament, Speaker of Majlis, to come to the Majlis chambers yesterday to take the oath of office in front of the um, Chief Justice. So that process um, has taken place. Um, I don't want to comment too much on how President Nasheed conducted uh, his affairs of government. You've been following the situation in Maldives. You've been following how the political climate has evolved. Um, so, you will form your own opinion about how the situation was. The people of Maldives made a huge transition uh, to democracy. It's been a long struggle. And now there are some fundamental values that the people of this country believe. And one of them is the importance of a rule of law. Today, the people of Maldives are not willing to see our leaders trespass and trample constitutions, our legal, um, our, our legal documents, and also breach the rule of law and the separation of powers. These are fundamental values, fundamental principles of our democracy. We assumed from the beginning that we have three powers of the state, and that executive, judiciary, and the legislature must operate independently without due influence from each other. So this is the principle we established. And when the judiciary was being interfered by the executive, and when a chief judge <coughs> of the courts was unlawfully retained by the military, everybody, I think including 
uh, international organizations would not believe that this would happen in a modern democracy. I'm sure you will not tolerate it in any of your countries either. And the Maldivian people are not willing to tolerate this either. So the reaction to that and the events that followed afterwards happen. And when there is a breach of law, the executive has to be responsible for it. So President Nasheed is responsible for his actions. I am not answerable to them. I advise the president against it. I came out when the president did not take my advice. I came out openly and I stated my position for all of you to hear. So I hope you will study the facts before you make your judgments about what happened. And just a follow-up question if I could. The, you know, the NDP party, former cabinet members, accuse you of basically siding with the opposition here, that you, are, you have now in their pocket, if you will. You talked about the importance of the independence of the ex executive. What do you say to these allegations that, you know, you, you are biased now? Um, I don't belong to MDP. I come from a different party. The president knew very well, very clearly, that I was not from MDP. And he asked me to be his running mate. I agreed. And to win the election, he also invited other political parties. And they all agreed to join because we all wanted progress towards democracy. And this was an opportunity to move for, forward. And therefore, history will always tell you that it was an effort by people who wanted freedom, people who were freedom-loving people in this country who came together to make, bring about a change in 2008. MDP alone cannot take full credit 